I'm Shavi with Sua Health and I am your Integrative Nutrition Health Coach. We're going to be discussing clear communication with your partner. Now communication is a cornerstone of every strong relationship. You won't always agree with your partner, but if you have a foundation of respect and clear communication, it will be much easier to resolve any conflicts. Now throughout this video, I'm going to be using the term partner but I want you to think of it in a bigger, you know, a bigger picture. You know, your partner could be your friend, a coworker, and whatnot. So don't just uh, view this as an intimate relationship. But how are you? How are you communicating in a broad spectrum? So I'm gonna ask. I'm gonna ask you some questions, and I want you to really take some time to consider. You know, how are you, how you interact in each situation and dive a little bit deep don't lie to yourself okay so i'm going to ask the question and i'm going to give you some time to think how frequently do you have conversations and make eye contact with no distractions including television driving or just talking to your children Do you understand your partner's needs on a day-to-day -day basis when they're struggling with stress in different situations like traveling, at parties, etc.? Like how do your partner respond? What are their needs? What are their needs? And sometimes anticipating those needs and, and helping them out also communicates that you care and you value that relationship. Now, does your partner understand your needs? And in order for someone to understand your needs, you got to communicate your needs. And that's not often done. So you don't have to come up with a big uh, speech about what your needs are. You can simply put, I need this. I need this, or I need you to do this for me to really comprehend X, Y, Z. So does your partner understand your needs and have you really expressed what those needs are? And when was the last time you both shared what you appreciate about um, one another and in that relationship? So if we're talking about a best friend, why do you appreciate him or her being your friend? What are those qualities? For example, I'll call up my friends like, oh my God, girl, I really appreciate you. Um, you've always been my go-to person. You never judge me for the mistakes that I make. I really, really appreciate you. And then it could just be, I appreciate you. You don't have to give a long speech. But when was the last time you expressed that? And do you express what you would like to improve in the relationship? So if we're talking about an intimate relationship, it could be one that you would like to improve uh, social interactions. You would like to uh, go out, mingle with friends. You would like to do quality time. That's something that you would like to improve. Or if we're talking about a friend, like a best friend, it could be, I would like to improve on the frequency in which we communicate. Now, what what decisions do you and your partner agree uh, should be made together? It could be a vacation. It can be a move, relocating, uh, changing jobs or something like that. And creating an intimate and long, long lasting relationship takes time and work. It's not going to be overnight. You got to really invest. It's about growing together. And if any, and if having an intimate partner is a high priority for you, you can begin to build the foundation by considering the questions that I previously asked you and then answering them for yourself because you can't give 
what you don't have, right? So if you want somebody, if you need somebody to listen, I want you to challenge yourself and really ask yourself this question. Do you really listen to other people? Because we, we tell people how we would like to be treated. So if you're not listening to someone else, if you're not valuing them, if you're not appreciating them, then what are you really communicating? That you don't want to be valued. You don't want to be listened. So treat people, you heard the saying, treat people how you want to be treated. But there's another version of that. Treat people how they want to be treated. It's like a double-edged sword. So if you want to be treated like that, be prepared to be treated like that. If you're not listening to people, then don't expect them to listen to you. And how can you put aside time every week to actively listen without judgment of your partner? I know we're full of judgment. Even if we say, oh, I don't judge. I, I don't judge people. You do. It's just a natural habit. Just be honest with yourself. But try not to. You know, each person is on their own journey. And you have the privilege to be a witness. And sometimes that that's awesome. So it looks like if your friend is wanting to break up a relationship, just witness that emotions um, that him or her is expressing. Uh, witness their growth and development. And it's not all about you. You're not, you're not the Dalai Lama or Gandhi or someone. Like, you're still struggling. You're still struggling. So sometimes it's an honor to witness someone else's growth and development. And if you build uh, these healthy communication skills into your relationships from the beginning, um, your well-being, you, you'll be well-equipped uh, to address problems that may arise, and it will help with your, your well-being. And you and your partner will know the boundaries and expectations of the relationship and be respectful of one another through clear communication. This goes with everybody, okay? Like if if you're my friend and you, and you don't communicate to me that you need me to validate the friendship every day by calling you, then how, I'm, how am I going to know that? You have to be clear. You have to, if you... Uh, if you would like to get married, if you would like to have a baby, make sure you communicate those things and to, to ensure that you two are on the right uh, playing field. No surprises. And now here are some tips on how to build basic communication skills in your relationship. Now set a precedent early and make communicating Fun. For example, establish a weekly date night and take turns planning. It can be as simple as a picnic in the park or something new and adventures like rock climbing, bike riding, something that you can do outside and you're communicating. And if someone makes a mistake, you know, don't be quick to, to pass judgment. Just like, oh, okay, well, I'm here for you. And then once they are down, you know, once they come down um, on the disappointment that they made mistakes, you know, it could be a week, it could be whatever, address it later. Address it later. And then practice acknowledging when your partner goes beyond the call of duty, goes beyond what you expected, even for the little things, like doing the chores that you hate to do or uh, going grocery shopping for you, little things that matter. Those little wins, the low hanging fruit, and speak honestly about any actions that you that that would uh, cause you to feel hurt, stress, guilty, and bad in any way, and avoid blaming, shaming, or isolating your partner. Listen to one another and have a productive conversation. Remember. Your feelings are your own feelings. No one can make you feel any kind of way. No one. And speak honestly. You, you will find that it will add to your well-being. Just come straight. You don't have to um, marshmallow it up. Just come straight. I feel very stressed. If you need a hug, hey, I need you to hug me right now. I need some attention. You can just say it like that. You don't have to nag. You don't have to just be really honest about how you're feeling. 
and be open and share your strengths and your weaknesses, pet peeves, and preferences. Like my strength is I like to organize stuff. I like to plan, but when my weaknesses um, could be finances. Could be, you know, and when you go out and you find a partner or a friendship, you're looking for someone to compliment you. You know, you don't have to be strong in all areas. It's okay to be a little bit of, a little bit weak, you know, um, and just be honest with yourself. And that's what that partnership is all about. Create a safe, judgment-free space for your partner and then practice eye contact when speaking. Practice eye contact when speaking. Yes, I understand. And rephrase what's being said to ensure that you're understanding the other's perspective. It sounds a little bit like, oh, I see. Now, or what, you, what you're saying is that you don't like sweet peas. You, for, you prefer string beans. Okay. I understand that. I understand. You do appreciate my cooking, but you just don't like the you just don't like the the sweet peas. Okay, thank you very much. Oh, mental note, mental note. We're on the same page. Okay, love you too. Okay, good. See how that goes. You know, I'm gonna rephrase. Okay, what you're saying is, or in other words, you do not want this. Did I get that correct? So that's how it sounds. Clear communication does take a lot of practice. It really does, but we will find that it will serve us in the long run. Uh, it will help build our relationship with our friends and our family, co-workers. That is the number one cause of many of the conflicts that a lot of people experience. Clear communication. No one will read your mind. If they do, they probably won't tell you, okay? Um, and why, sh why should we put all of that pressure on a person to like read our mind? Just say what you need, say what you need. Struggle unites us all, you're never alone. If you didn't hit that subscription button, please do so. If you are my client, like always, we will be talking about this during your next session. Best wishes to you on your journey.